All right, what's up, people? We got a good overview for you today. We're gonna to be talking about the Holley Terminator X for a Fox Body Mustang. Now, for those of you that know, the original Terminator X kit for a Fox Body Mustang, which some people call version one, some people call generation one, so pick your terminology. It was discontinued a few years ago at the time of this video. Holley had to change a few things with that particular kit. They made a new part number, and as time has gone on, they were able to look at things a little differently, get all their ducks back in a row, and they have brought back the first version of the Terminator X, which which is part number 550-937F. This was the kit that was so simple to remove the Ford original computer and wiring harness and install the Terminator X kit into a Fox body Mustang. It's not gonna be an install today simply because if you read through the dedicated manual that Holly provides with this kit for a Fox body Mustang, it tells you everything you need to do. All I'm gonna do is help explain some of this stuff. That way, if you need a little bit better explanation on a kit like this versus reading a product description, that's gonna be the purpose of this video. Speaking of manuals, that's what we're gonna start with. Y'all are gonna hear me refer to these manuals several times in this video and for joking purposes who knows we may put a counter up in the corner of how many times i tell you to reference this manual you're going to get a fox body specific manual this covers everything you need to know specific for this terminator x kit i would read this first familiarize yourself with the terminology and get acquainted with you know some of the items and harnesses and tidbits that you're going to be working with the other manual this is what i'm calling the master manual this is for terminator x and terminator x max systems the max systems have transmission controls that's really all the max means this here goes into way more detail on the systems but where you'll use this before you go to start the car and you need to kind of freshen up your knowledge and learn a little bit more about the provided lcd screen that lets you dial in all your parameters related to your specific car that way you can set the terminator x up appropriately for your application. Those are the two manuals, like I said, I'm gonna reference that several times. The brain or how this thing operates. Here is your Terminator X ECU. You'll notice two connections here. This is for the main harness. You'll notice another connection over here. This is for the power wire. And then this is for the internal one bar map sensor that you'll need to plug into a factory vacuum line for vacuum reference. This is the dedicated power harness for the ECU. You have a power and a ground, and I believe this is a 40 amp fuse in this fuse holder. Yep, 40 amp fuse. When you read your manual, Holly's gonna tell you to watch Wire this directly to the battery. You want a as clean a source as you can get for this ECU. You don't want to wire this power, you don't want to wire this ground to something that is occupying another spot for like an accessory or another piece of electrical equipment. Straight to the battery on this particular power wire. With the power wire, you'll see some heat shrink and some generic ring terminals. You can use these if you so choose. However, in most applications, some folks like to use different types of connectors. If you wanna source your own type of electrical connector, you can do it. You'll need to source a connector or terminal that accepts a 10 to 12 gauge wire. Over here to the main harness. Again, you'll start out here with these two connections. This is what plugs into the Terminator X ECU. As we kind of snake through the harness, we'll notice some stuff for like a power tap. This is for additional accessories. Holly talks about it in the manual. And then you'll notice some fuel related connections. Here's a fuse and a relay for a fuel pump. You're only going to use this if you have a fuel pump that operates at 15 amps or less. If you're using a fuel pump that is operating higher than 15 amps, you're not gonna utilize the relay or the fuse on the Holly side, but you will utilize the 12 volt fuel pump trigger wire. This would operate a dedicated fuel pump harness that's already in the car. For example here, an Aeromotive 340 liter per hour fuel pump. You have to run their dedicated harness in order for the pump to operate the way it's supposed to. Their dedicated harness has a spot that triggers the relay to turn on the fuel pump. That's gonna take a little bit of electrical knowledge to understand that. There is a section in the manual where Holly talks about kind of wiring the fuel pump up and utilizing some of the factory wiring that's already in the car. Again, it's going to go back to what you're using and what you're doing for your applications. Make sure you make the right move when it comes to your fuel pump stuff. Here is a basic input output connector. This is for like electric fans. This is also for AC tip in or kick in for the idle. That sends the signal to the Holly ECU telling it, hey, we need to up the idle just a little bit. So this also has a spot for a wide open throttle cutoff capability. So whenever the throttle position sensor goes wide open throttle, the ECU sees that it will turn off the compressor, which reduces just some long-term wear and tear on your AC. 
AC compressor. Next bundle of wire, you'll have your 12 volt switch, you'll have a ground, and then over here, this little small connector, this is your CAN bus connector. So this is where your Holly screen will connect to or a Holly Pro Dash, if that's the route you're going to take. Moving down the harness, this is where we'll see majority of our electrical connections for our sensors. This is the throttle position sensor connection. You'll notice that it's just a generic three wire Delphi weather pack connector. This is the male side on the harness. And then what you'll do, you'll cut the factory connector off of your throttle position sensor, and then you'll wire what Holly gives you onto that throttle position sensor, and then you'll be able to connect it and keep on rocking. Up next, we have a map sensor connection or manifold absolute pressure. This is if you're running an aftermarket or external three or five bar map sensor. For those of you that are gonna do that, more than likely you're gonna be boosted. It would be the only time you're running an aftermarket map sensor. Next is manifold air temp. This is required for the ECU to operate. Holly does give you that particular connector. It's included with the kit. It's this one right here that has the little element inside of it. That is your manifold air temp connector. Jumping over here, we have a coolant temperature sensor connector. This is also required for the Holly ECU to operate as it should. In the kit, they give you a coolant temperature sensor. I'll touch base real quick, even though they covered in the manual. The manifold air temperature sensor will install into the lower intake just above cylinder number five. And then the coolant temperature sensor will install into the heater tube on the passenger side of the engine because that sensor gets removed because you're no longer using the Ford computer or harness. Optional sensors are gonna be oil pressure and fuel pressure. Holly talks about it in the manual. If you wanna utilize these two sensors, you'll have to purchase those two sensors and then install them accordingly. Here's the idle air control motor connector. It uses the factory four two wire connector, which was pulse width modulation. So that goes right into your factory idle air control motor. So over here, we have another loose bundle of wires. This is explained in the instruction manual. Here's your ignition connector. This connector here will plug in to the dedicated harness that goes to the TFI module. If you notice on this particular ignition harness, a white wire that says points outputs. This will either get connected to the negative side of the coil if you don't have a capacitive discharge ignition box or aftermarket ignition box for simpler terms, or if you do have an aftermarket ignition box, this will go to that specific spot on that ignition box. And then one of the last connectors on the main harness is for the fuel injectors. Fuel injectors have their dedicated harness, which is labeled cylinder one through cylinder eight. And for those of you that don't know the four cylinder numbering sequence, cylinder number one starts on the passenger side, which is bank one. And then down that particular bank, it goes one, two, three, four. And then jumping over to the driver's side from front to back, it goes five, six, seven, and eight. So in this little particular baggie here, we have some loose accessories. O2 sensor bung if you need it, which most of you are just going to install the O2 sensor into the factory location on the mid pipe and a few connectors for the vacuum reference. Speaking of oxygen sensor, this is a Bosch style oxygen sensor that's included in the kits. This is pretty simple in what it does. You'll install this directly into your mid pipe, be it bank one or bank two. Holly tells you proper positioning in the manual and then you'll plug in this little jumper harness to the oxygen sensor and then that harness will get connected to your main harness. And like anything, just make sure you route this away from exhaust components, drivetrain components, that sort of stuff. In this particular kit, Holly provides a ECU mounting bracket. This goes underneath the passenger seat and it utilizes the seat studs as its attaching point. And then last but not least, we have the display. Again, this will plug into the CAN connector on the main harness, and this is where you will do all your initial setups and adjustments. We're gonna have to use this to input the displacement of the engine, injector spec, type of injector, that sort of stuff that's needed when it comes to electronic fuel injection. As a whole, that's a good basic general rundown of the Terminator X for a Fox Body Mustang. If you have any itemized questions, as always, drop us a comment, we would be more more than happy to help you. You know, we love talking with all of you down in the comments. What we do, we find a lot of value in it. So we're gonna sign off. Uh, as always, subscribe to the channel, like the video, turn on notifications, and then until we catch you in the next one for all things Fox Body Mustang, keep it right here with the real enthusiast, LMR.com.